So welcome Ulrich and, and Andreas uh, who will present for CureSight. And I know you have a lot of, uh, 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 lot of messages, so I will not take any more of your time. So you can uh, start the presentation now. Thank you for the introduction and thank you for being invited to the virtual Nordic Growth Days. Uh, my name is Ulrich Krasilnikov and I am the CEO and CFO of CureSight. And I'm together with uh, Andreas Kerr, who is a co-founder, CMO and CSO, uh, take us through this uh, exciting case. First, a short disclaimer. And also for, for the new uh, investors, uh, we know is continuously joining, uh, joining uh, CureSight. We have some highlights. Uh, first of all, we are, uh, CureSight is a Danish clinical phase two company uh, founded back in 2013 by uh, Andreas Kerr and some from his research group. It's based on more than 10 years of research from Rigs Hospital in Copenhagen. CureSight has developed a, a U-Trace, uh, which is a proprietary platform within imaging for which can be used in several cancer types for diagnostic purpose. It has been broad clinical tested in, in eight ongoing or completed phase two uh, clinical trials. Actually, four is completed right now. And let's come back to that. And furthermore, U-Trace has also been tested in more than 400 patients and by that proven to be safe. Furthermore, we are tapping into a very attractive market. I'll come back to that, how it's expected to grow. Furthermore, we are using quite a lot of resources in order to strengthen our IP position on the pet, uh, with issue patents in the market we expect it to pursue in the uh, coming future. And furthermore, in connection with the IPO uh, two years ago, we raised around 100 million Danish crowns or approximately 13 million euros in connection with the IPO, among others for financing the phase three pet imaging started with the U-trace in brain cancer and also to develop the therapeutic oxygen with u treat in brain cancer. Just some highlights, I will not take them all, but just for, for the new investors, uh, we were awarded in, in connection with the IPO with two uh, prizes from the uh, uh, best IPO 2020 from the independent IPO guide, one from the excellent stock price development. That's not the case at the moment. And then uh, also for the quality and of the, the uh, company and the case we, we have uh, got to, to the IPO. We have initiated uh, three preclinical studies uh, on therapy part with you treat in both brain cancer, neuroendocrine tumors and head and neck cancer, a science CIO agreement. We have conducted and completed uh, uh, four actual uh, phase two studies in prostate cancer, head and neck cancer, and also neuroendocrine tumors and also brain cancer, which we'll come back to that also. And then uh, we have uh, strengthened our uh, IP portfolio with granted patents, both within the therapeutic part based on U-Treat and also the diagnostic part with U-Trace in, in both in EU and also US and Canada and Japan. And not least, what is also important for new uh, investors that we have initiated commission research with ACB and Capital Partner. And recently, uh, ACB has published an updated report on the uh, valuation range and also how they see the development of the company right now. This is also very interesting and, uh, for, for new investors and quite a comprehensive work they have done. Yeah. If we look at the market, uh, then it's main, there are some three main growth factors, which is mainly the great aging population we unfortunately also uh, increase the number of cancer incidences, wider use of nuclear medicine around the world, and also introduction of new radio pharmaceuticals like U-Treat and U-Trace, uh, like that, which uh, CureSight is developing. And that is expected also to, to increase the market for the, for the coming next eight to, to 10 years with a six fold. So very attractive also for that perspective. Then I will hand over to Andreas, who will take us through the technology and also how it's uh, expected to be used in, within the different uh, cancer indications that we are pursuing right now. Yeah, thank, thank you, Ryan. Uh, again, thank you for having us. Um, um, I'm going to take you a little bit about the uh, preparatory theranostic platform we have. And we are working within cancer and uh, we are using UPAR theranostics. And theranostics is a combination of diagnostics where our technology is called U-Trace and therapy where our technology is called U-Treat. Uh, and the nice thing is, and I come back to that, is that basically we have a compound which we can either uh, 
make into imaging that you trace or therapy with local radiation therapy and i come back to that together the the the, the two things work in synergy so if you can see it lights up on the imaging it's also uh, likely or you know that your therapy will gain access um the target we are binding our uh, compounds to is UPAR. And UPAR is a unique biomarker of cancer. It's expressed on cancer cells, uh, in particular on activated stroma cells and where cancer is most aggressive. It has been found uh, in, in many studies to correlate with cancer aggressiveness. And for this reason, it can be used to find out how aggressive a cancer is, but it can also be used as a target for therapy because the, the cells that are most aggressive are the ones you, you want to treat the most. Uh, there's relatively low expression of UPA in healthy tissue, and maybe one of the major uh, importance of, of this technology is that it's not limited to one type of cancer. So our technology can be used across solid cancers, where 80% of all these cancers are UPA positive. Um, yeah, I just see. UPAR uh, is, as I said, prognostic in cancer. It has been shown in more than 200 publications, not with our technology, because we are doing non-invasive imaging, but on tissue samples from patients. Uh, therefore, it can be used for risk stratification, and this is very important in, in the management of cancer patients. I come back to that. Uh, the more aggressive the cancer is, the higher UPAR is expressed, and this is, of course, very uh, important as the most aggressive cancers are the, are the ones needing the therapy the most. And finally, uh, the distribution of UPA is not homogenous within a tumor. So uh, the more aggressive the cancer cells are, the higher the target is expressed. And in this way, we get an intelligent distribution of our therapy. We do give more therapy to areas of the cancer that need them more. And that this is what is called dose painting. Uh, this, this is basically the concept coming uh, back to the initial slide on theranostics. What you see up here is in red the UPAR receptor, which is at the cell membrane of the cancer cells. We then have a binding peptide here illustrated uh, with, a, with an arrow A105 that binds to this target. And then we have two versions of this binding peptide, namely one for imaging what we call U-trace, it's harmless radioactivity that can be used for, for scanning, and U-treat that is not harmless because it provides short-range radiotherapy. And why is this short-range radiotherapy uh, the, the new way to do radiotherapy? It's because it's, uh, it's radiotherapy that you inject. You inject it, that is the person in the middle, you inject this compound with radioactivity, it circulates in the body and binds everywhere where we have the cancer cells expressing UPAR. And then it sits there and provides radiation therapy, but only with a range of one millimeter. In this way, you get almost no radiation of adjacent tissue, but only where you have bound uh, your tracer. Uh, in comparison with that, on the left is the traditional external radiation therapy where you irradiate from the outside uh, and you you have to go through healthy tissue so first of all target radionuclide therapy in general will be more gentle but it's also a thing you can use if there's widespread uh, spread of your cancer if there are many metastases because there's no way you can try to externally irradiate a disseminated cancer because you would simply give too much radiation to uh, to the body. So for this reason, uh, many believe this is really the new way to do radiotherapy, and I'm sure we will see a lot of activity in this uh, space in the future. As earlier mentioned, uh, we we do not uh, we are not limited to one cancer type. In contrast to a lot of other technologies, you might have heard of. Uh, some of these uh, targeted radionuclide therapies, they go for, for instance, for PSMA, that is specific for prostate cancer, and therefore they are limited to cancer, the cancer that expresses it. 
as we chose UPAR, which is broadly expressed across solid cancers. We have the luxury, uh, but also the challenge of selecting which cancers we want to pursue. And of course, the driver here is where do we conceive, where do we see uh, the, the medical needs to be, the unmet needs to be highest? Where is there no real good therapy today? And for this reason, we started out pursuing brain cancer. Uh, I come back to that it's a very uh, harsh cancer with little treatment options today. We pursued prostate cancer uh, on the imaging side. I also come back to that in more details. And then on top of this recent, we, we ex, uh, expanded our strategy. So we now also are pursuing uh, therapy and imaging both in neuroendocrine tumors and head and neck cancers. And also these two cancer types, I will briefly touch up on uh, at the end of the presentation. If we start out with brain cancer or the, uh, the brain cancer type called glioblastoma, there's really an unmet need for better therapy. Uh, there are 65,000 new cases of brain cancer in the US and EU uh, annually. Of these, 30% are high-grade gliomas, of which most are glioblastomas. Unfortunately, 10% of these cancers are in children. Uh, and all of these patients today, uh, or the vast majority, receive external radiation therapy. So we know that radiation therapy is the way to go but we want to do this in the more gentle way uh, with targeted radionuclide therapy. Uh, the standard of care is radiation therapy combined with a chemotherapy called timosolomide. And despite all what's done today, the patients only survive for a median of uh, a little more than one year. After five years, only one in 20 patients are still alive. And since 2005, there has been almost no improvement in therapy and the standard of care is still the same as in 2005. So we believe uh, that something is needed to be game changing here. And of course, uh, one, of, one of the things is to make this uh, injected radiotherapy. Uh, we combine it as explained in, the, in a theranostic approach with imaging. And what you see here is actually imaging of a patient with U-trace. And uh, as the paradigm is, what you see is what you treat. The cancer in the middle that lights up red takes up our imaging tracer. And since U-treat is merely, uh, it, it is the same compound, the same binder, but it's just the type of radioactivity that is changed. This image will predict where our therapy will go. And in this case, high uptake in the tumor, so high likelihood of effective treatment. This is just to reiterate what, what I already uh, touched up on. Why is this injected targeted radionuclide therapy uh, more gentle and potentially much more effective than external radiation therapy? And in the middle or on the right, you see the idea just as the image I showed, so showed you, that when you inject it, it seeks out the cancer, it sits in the tumor. Whereas on the left, you see the concept used today on external radiation therapy, where you do irradiate from different angles. So you get most of the radiation, the red area in the tumor, but you get a lot of irradiation in the surrounding brain tissue because you have to irradiate through healthy tissue with an external beam uh, radiation. And very often it's, or mostly, it's actually the dose delivered to healthy tissue that, uh, that will be dose limiting. So there is uh, the potential of a much more effective treatment with the, with the principle of U-treat. That was brain cancer. And our other main indication is prostate cancer, even though we could also pursue uh, therapy. There are other options here. So we are really uh, up for here an imaging and risk stratification strategy. Prostate cancer is, is, is a very common cancer type, uh, and but unfortunately, it has a large overtreatment. When, when I went to medical school, it was always taught that more people die uh, with than of prostate cancer. And this is correct. The vast majority 
of prostate cancers will never become aggressive and spread throughout the body. But the problem is how to recognize those that do not need radical therapy and radical therapy typically is removal of the host whole prostate gland. Uh, this is not trivial because when removing the prostate gland, typically up to 70% become impotent and or uh, get some degree of urinary incontinence. So you really do not want to overtreat. Unfortunately, because the tools for risk stratification today are not very reliable, uh, and those are the biopsies, they, if you make them and repeat them a couple of months after, they will have another readout. And this is not because the cancer changed, but simply because where you did your sampling uh, did uh, one time it, 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 it hits the most aggressive part and the next time it doesn't. For this reason that everybody knows this is not very reliable, very often a better safe than sorry strategy is applied. That means the, the doctor will say, let's better get rid of the prostate gland because then we are sure that uh, the, uh, there will be no spread. But again, if then impotence is, uh, is the, uh, what happens and it could, it was not necessary, then uh, uh, it would have been much better. And of course, the patient will never know because the patient thinks, thank God I got rid of a potentially aggressive cancer, but in most cases, it would never have developed in an aggressive way. And, uh, and our uh, strategy and, and technology and what we are going to study and already have data on is how we can do this with imaging. So instead of taking these ungentle uh, biopsies, then we can do the image readout uh, because UPA is an aggressiveness marker. We can see how aggressive uh, the cancer is. And uh, this is the whole way that we want to replace this. It should also be mentioned that biopsies are hampered by side effects in up to 10% of the patients because they are done uh, through the rectum. So a lot of these patients will get uh, some uh, degree of infection, fever, and also bleeding is quite common. All things that you do not see with non-invasive imaging. And how does it look? This is a patient where on the left, you see the red arrows are not indicating the prostate uh, uh, tumor, but the prostate gland as a whole. This is a cross section of the patient. And then in the middle, you see the UPAR PET scan. And on the right, you see the two images overlaid. So this is a, this is a cancer that lights heavily up with uh, U-trace. And for that reason, it should uh, be removed. If this has been another patient uh, where it didn't light up, then it could be left uh, behind and followed. So this is the idea and what our studies hopefully uh, will prove in the future, a gentle way to follow these patients. Um, at the end, I will just touch briefly up on our two added indication, namely neuroendocrine tumors, where there's a need both for better diagnosing and therapy uh, and here we want to pursue uh, a strategy where we want to uh, go for you treat therapy of patient, in particular those uh, with most aggressive cancers. And I can uh, just show you some examples here. Uh, as you see in the middle, uh, the, the, the colored uh, tumor that is seen there is, is a liver metastasis of one of these patients light, lightening up with uh, UPAR PET. On the right, you see different variants of this tumor all lighting uh, clearly up. And we have shown that uh, almost all of these patients, 97% of neuroendocrine tumor patients, are positive on U-trace scans. And for this reason, they, they potentially, almost all of these also are eligible for therapy with u -tree. But of course, this is something uh, that remains to be proven in the future. And the last indication we are pursuing right now is head and neck cancer, where there's a, a need for better diagnosing and therapy. It's uh, the sixth most common cancer with, uh, with more than half a million cases each year, uh, 115,000 of these in, in the EU and US. And today, it's hampered by a lot of side effects 
when radiation therapy is given with a standard of care because you do irradiate in many of these cases through the jaw. And for this reason, prophylactically, patients need to have uh, their teeth extracted because otherwise they are the risk they will simply have necrosis and, and in essence, rotten. And uh, this, of course, is very uncomfortable for the patient and something that uh, potentially could be circumvented because by not irradiating through the jaw, but by an injected radiation therapy, we would circumvent uh, this challenge. This is just to show how reliably we can show with you, Trace, uh, the, uh, the, the prognosis of the patient, both the overall survival on the right and the relapse-free survival in the middle. So the blue, dark blue uh, line indicates the patient with low U-power uptake and you can see in essence, 100% of these patients are in life, uh, 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 remains alive or without relapse over our observation period of, uh, of almost four years. Whereas if UPA is high, you can see on the light blue that, that patients get relapse and unfortunately also die. And the way U-Trace is going to be used is that if you are in the dark blue category, then de-escalation of therapy, a much more gentle therapy can be offered to these patients. Yeah, and this is just to emphasize that uh, strategic partnerships in theranostics is a part of the strategy for QSR going forward. Uh, first of all, it will validate and boost them the, and de-risk the case in general. It will financial, uh, strengthen our financial with non-diluting funding mostly. And then they will give us the power and speed to market as we will be part of our bigger organizations. And also we will be able to share knowledge and by that, uh, yeah, have a better position going forward. Well, like, uh, I, I, yeah. I'm sorry to be the yeah. hard uh, teacher. I, I think yeah. if we should catch some questions, I, I think maybe we will get around some of it. Actually, this where the partner. Your potential partner discussion is that uh, future and, and current partners is that on the theognostic or across uh, and across all indication indication area, meaning is it on you trace you treat uh, the combined part and across all areas? You know you have a very yeah. wide uh, range. So can you give a little bit <laughs> elaborate a little bit on that? Sure. Uh, first of all, it's on all the indications, and furthermore, it's both based on uh, you trace only diagnostic path because the company is only focusing on, on the diagnostic path in, in general. And then there are also only companies focusing on you treat, meaning the therapeutic part. And then there are also companies focusing on the diagnostic part, which we are pursuing. So you can imagine it's quite a puzzle right now for us mm -hmm. to find out who will be the right partner for us going forward. That is also why we have been disclosing earlier uh, this year that it will be, it will take six to, to 12 months mostly uh, or expectedly before we can disclose anything about the partnerships, because we have to find out the right match. Also, how will the, the strategic be, be fit be uh, going forward uh, with the, the partners we will sign up with? And also that it don't, don't, don't conflict uh, within the ease indications. Uh, so that is uh, uh, quite interesting and, and good question, I, I would say. And, and, and it, looking, so when you say eight to 10 months, you will start, uh, what we should expect maybe for some news flow looking into 23 is you starting to uh, connect with partner on the U-treat uh, part. That is what I should look out maybe for a news flow. That could be, but actually it's uh, actually, uh, I would say discussions we already have initiated with different partners, but uh, it's only, yeah. I would say when we have news about that, it will be, uh, uh, disclosed through the right channels to, to, to the market. <laughs> of course. Yeah. And, and, and then there's a, there's also a question here, you know, there is capital restraint and we can get back to your cash burn also as the last question, but there's capital restraint. You are, you are, you are doing very broad indication. You first look at, uh, you, uh, you trace and then you therapy, uh, but I guess you trace needs to work before you therapy kind of work. So, so why have you chosen to, to, you know, go, uh, the, the full way you might say before you have uh, finalized and proven a, 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 a maybe phase three study on on on, on new trace. Yeah, may, maybe I can answer that. I, I think we we have there have been scanned more than uh, four hundred patients with the uh, trace technology. So so we I mean we know firmly that U trace works that it that it is pro that is taken up 
in the tumors uh, that it is prognostic in all these uh, investigator initiated phase two studies. So, uh, so the idea with the phase three studies uh, and, and the studies uh, in the future combined with therapy is really to, to uh, position them to make studies that support the label that we will get by FDA and EMA. So, so those studies need to be designed exactly in the way that you want to use it as, as a product. Uh, so, so I would say they are not uh, they are not undertaken uh, with the purpose of showing that it works because we know it works, but but to get the solid data and uh, the exact position in, in the different indications. Perfect. Thank you. We are running out of time. I'm sure we will meet you again in, in some other events where we can dig through all the questions. Thank you to you, Ulrike and Andreas, for taking us through your very exciting company. Thank you, Thank you very much.